I'll go. I'll follow my Christ who loves me so wherever he leads I'll go wherever sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the Savior shall gather over on the other shore and the road is called up yonder I'll be there when the road when the road is called up yonder I'll be there when the road when the road is called up yonder I'll be there when the road when the road is called up yonder when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of His resurrection share, when His chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road, when the road is called up yonder. When the road, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road, when the road is called up yonder. When the road is called up yonder, I'll be there.
With such I hasten to the place where God my Savior shows His face and gladly take my station there and wait for thee, sweet Rachel told me to ring the bell. Okay, so let's remember, coming up July the 4th, uh, we'll start eating about 6.30. When it gets dark, we'll start the fireworks. So let's remember this. Uh, we'll be having barbecue and a few sides. Uh, I think we're going to have homemade ice cream and different things. So remember this. Uh, Sunday, July the 10th, after the uh, p.m. services, they'll be starting the youth camp, and it'll run through the 12th at 5.30 p.m. And then Saturday, August the 6th, will be the Back to School Bash. They'll be having games, prizes, food, clothing, and school supplies to give away, so let's remember these things. Uh, let's uh, continue to remember our prior request list. I'd like to say it's so good to have Mike Ashley back with us this morning. Yeah. If he gets up and run around the church, just chase him. Make him go a little faster because he can't sit still due to his surgery. And he had hip surgery and uh, he has to get up every once in a while, but that's fine. He won't, you won't bother a thing, Mike, so don't worry about that. Let's continue to remember all the others on our prayer request list. Again, those that's lost loved ones, we ask you to pray for them very much that the Lord will give them comfort. And uh, let's remember Brother Mickey all the surrounding churches and remember our country uh, more shootings again this week it just continues to go on and uh, you know satan's done his job well if we do ours as good as he does uh, maybe we can make a little difference so let's let's try to stand up and be counted when we have the opportunities because we all or given those opportunities. Uh, anything else? Okay. Oh, Joanne, what about your sister in law? Okay, so we wanted to announce we're going to be beginning a married couples class on Thursday nights Bible study. Okay, so it's open to any married couples of any age. Or if you are somebody who is considering getting married or maybe right before getting married, please come to this Bible study. It's called Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage. Now, by coming to this, you are not admitting that you do not have a good marriage. That's not what we're saying. But everybody's marriage could be better than what it is. All the married people say amen. Amen. Yeah, exactly. I say uh, sin. <laughs> Is it a part where it says have to put up with the wife, like with the high demanding, two talking wife? There yeah. may be an entire two or three hour session on that. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could tell you I'm joking. I'm serious, actually. Uh, okay, so this is going to be uh, Thursday night, start about six o'clock. We're going to do finger foods, that kind of thing. And listen, again, you're not saying anything bad about yourself, but you can all learn some of what God's intention is for marriage. It's serious. It's important to stop. I cry about 
Okay, I'm going to cry about this drum set. There you go. <laughs> the last year we should be starting the 14th of July. The we'll sign up sheet back here. Make sure to sign up. Child care will be provided for free. Unless your children are little demons falling into a cost of some money. <laughs> oh. What? EMTs on standby. Ken says you need to go too. So. Okay, anything else? saying that, uh, Dennis said Wanda's back was messed up this morning, remember her too? Any others? Yes. Who passed away? Okay. All right, let's remember this. Any others? Yes. Anyone else? Robert, for the back to school bash, we're also going to need good used clothing for the giveaway, and we get, we'll need school supplies for the giveaway. Okay, so what do you want in there? Like pencils, tablets? Anything, yes. Anything? Okay. That is August the 6th from 11 to 2. Will do. I'll get mine out and go to Walmart and get a bucket and put it in my freezer. <laughs> I'll turn it on. I'll lie to you. Okay. All right, if it does, we'll just put it in the night. Anyone else? Brother Rocco, this is perfect.
I forgot to mention Bobby Schroeder, her blood test came back the best they have in a while. She's still got a few other issues that they're looking into. Did she hear from the other tests yet, Gary? positive part and continue to pray for Don't say that. Good morning, church. Good to see all of you this morning. Church, we serve a big God. We serve a mighty God. I'm just here to tell you this morning that if you've got something that's weighing you down, that you feel defeated this morning, that it ain't nothing. God, so don't be afraid to hand it over to him because he I don't want you to feel defeated. And uh, it's just a deception of the enemy if you feel that way. Uh, so don't be afraid to just just uh, let the Lord carry that load for you. Alright, we're gonna start out this morning on page 97, standing on a solid rock. <laughs>
All right. Good morning. Good to see all of you this morning. I pray that God has given you a good week this week. He's blessed you in all ways. Uh, we've had a, a good week this week. Uh, we looking forward to July the 4th, the celebration coming up, Amen. celebrating our, our freedom. And I do want to take a minute uh, to say um, I thank God uh, for the decision made by the Supreme Court uh, this week. I know a lot of people, there are some people that are going to be very, and there are a lot of people that are very critical of that, uh, that decision. But folks, let me, let me just tell you what's the real of that. Uh, for 50 years, we have been killing the unborn children. And I cannot imagine my God is happier than that. Uh, so I'm so glad, glad that he's made it. He, all that did really was move it from the state, the authority of the government to the state. The state will set the uh, guidelines there on abortion. Uh, but uh, uh, let's just be real, folks. The Bible calls abortion an abomination. I mean, that's just what it says. So it is what it is. Uh, but anyway... Uh, and I'm glad they do make exceptions. Uh, every state will have exceptions probably uh, for rape and incest and things like that. Uh, so, uh, but I'm glad that decision was made finally. Uh, so uh, I, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, listen, uh, you've got to take a stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Uh, so let's take a stand for that. I'm for the unborn child. Amen. So anyway, uh, we had a good time yesterday. I had a little family reunion. Uh, there in Murray where my sisters and my cousins, some of the cousins were there and uh, Lola didn't know about it or she would have been there uh, but uh, there was there was a lot, I, I announced that from the pulpit the other day, where was you at? I announced it from the pulpit last Sunday, where was you at? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to get into that part or not. <laughs> We did ride bicycles in there, and I had a little sign, a sign on the front of the bicycle that said, uh, can't afford Biden gas, vote for Trump. And I, yeah, I was just, I was aggravating my sisters. Uh, but anyway, we had, we had a good time. So anyway, don't hold that against me, y'all. But anyway, God is so good to us. Uh, I want to say something about uh, Steve's brother. Steve's brother Greg came to me the other day. And, uh, He's got a whole different outlook on life. He's working this morning. He works at Snappy Tomato. They work him on Sundays a lot, but he came to me and shared his life. And, uh, he, God has really touched him, I believe. Uh, I pray that he has. Uh, he'll be worshiping with us every chance he gets. So y'all pray for Steve's brother uh, through the service. We're going to have communion today. And uh, I don't know... Uh, what y'all think about communion. By the way, this is open communion. You do not have to be a member to take communion here. Uh, it is open. Uh, uh, we believe here that if you're a child of God, uh, communion is for you. Uh, so anyway, uh, we'll be receiving communion. I'll be explaining in the sermon today. That's what I'm going to preach on, the Lord's table. Uh, so uh, y'all pay attention uh, you'll see some things maybe you didn't know and how this started and why we do this. Uh, and the whole sermon is about that. So I'll try to explain that the best I can. So, all right. God has been so good to us, folks. Uh, he's moving in many ways. I'm looking forward to this young couple's class. Uh, you say, well, why, why are you looking forward to it, preacher? You ain't a young couple. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me and Patty have been married 53 years, but we're a young couple. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm, we go out on a date night uh, every Thursday night. That, that's what we do. So y'all are interfering with our, our date night by starting out on Thursday night. But that's okay. We'll just move our date night to here. Then we'll go in. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we'll take care of that. But I am I'm looking for... And think, listen, this is simply for uh, young uh, married couples uh, that are even, even couples that are thinking about marriage. And, and you want to know... You want to know... And old married couples. Yes, we need it as, as bad as they do. But uh, it's, it's just simply to guide your life and show you. And I believe the older couples maybe can show the younger couples uh, maybe what you should and shouldn't do because we've not been there. Uh, so anyway, I'm looking forward to that. I believe God will bless that. Uh, I thank God uh, for instituting that. Huh? <laughs> uh, Dennis and 
anniversaries on the 4th of July and ain't gonna be no fireworks there either. <laughs> All right, I better, I better get on with the offer. I'm gonna get in trouble. All right, we got anybody to make us an offer this morning? instilled in them. God, we acknowledge this morning that there's nothing good in us, only what you've done. Uh, Lord, I, I thank you and I praise you for that. Lord, I ask you this morning to receive this offering, God. Uh, God, uh, take it, distribute it, use it, God, whatever way you see fit, that it might bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Send it to the homes that you would have to go to and speak to their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
morning. It's been a long time since I've been up this way, up here. I just want to praise God and thank Him for laying this song on my heart. Um, I usually do things that are a little bit more quiet <laughs> and a little bit more uh, subdued. However, this has got a little bit more upbeat and rock and roll to it. And it sure does move my heart and move my soul when I hear it on the radio. And, and um, it's called A Child of Love. It's released a couple years ago by We the Kingdom. So it's very upbeat, it's very energetic. And I see that in our church we had this really great mix of traditional um, contemporary music. We have the very solemn spiritual, we have the upbeat, we have it all, which is really super great. But this song has a, a really special message. It, it touches my heart because it's, it's about a person who, you know, was, was really headed down the wrong path. And, you know, we, we've all got a past, we've all got a history, and we've all done things that we'd like to have a do-over. Boy, if I could have five years of my 20s that I could just kind of have a do-over with that, you know? <laughs> you know. But here's the thing. When we ask God forgiveness, He forgives our sins and remembers them no more. Amen? Now, the hard part is us forgiving ourselves. That's the hard part. But God remembers it no more. You're done. You're clear. You've asked him for forgiveness. That's history. Let it go. You know, don't carry around that baggage with you every day. You know, and it, that's hard for us to let things go from our past, you know. And I've worked really hard on that all my years. I'm almost 64, so I have a few years behind me, you know of good decisions and bad decisions, but I know one thing, when we're saved, we're forgiven, we find our freedom, and the goal is to find peace. And I can honestly say, you all, it took me many years to find that peace. I mean, a lot of work, a lot of study, a lot of, you know, hills and valleys and mountains and pits, and God pulling me out of the pit, and, you know, right? I mean, but we learn from all those things. And, of course, the Bible teaches us we will have trials and tribulations on this earth. But God always works everything for our good. And I can attest to that. Amen. Amen. And also, we learn from everything we go through. And hopefully, we become stronger in our faith, which God knows I have. And I just walked through a different path when my dad was passing and I was caregiving him for, for three months. And he passed on March 2nd. And... His birthday will be July 4th. Lola, you also. So that'll be a special day in my heart. But the thing was, I had never walked down that path, caregiving for a dying parent, where you're helping them 12, 14 hours a day and getting three or four hours of sleep and not able to take care of yourself because you're taking care of them. And I learned some hard lessons, but, but it was all for the good, you know, and I learned a lot during that time. And I'm very thankful and grateful to God that he gave me that time with my dad. And that was a real special time. But this song means it's got a great message, you know, and I hope you enjoy it. It's called Child of Love by We the Kingdom.
song. It's so true. All right, today, for just a few minutes, I want to talk to you about the Lord's table. Um, communion. What does communion mean? Uh, the definition of communion is having fellowship or fellowship. And uh, that's what we do uh, during communion. And uh, communion is something, uh, some churches observe communion every Sunday. Uh, some once a month, uh, some quarterly, uh, some once a year. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, they, uh, they did communion once a year. Uh, and they went to the temple once a year, most of them. Uh, but however, uh, however many times that you, your church feels like uh, that they need to observe that or does observe that, uh, it should always be done uh, with this thought uh, that we are partakers in the body of Christ. Uh, that's showing. Uh, communion is what, what that is. It's showing that we, uh, we take his body and his blood in us and we show the world that we are his. Uh, and, and so that, that's what communion does. But it, it lays out the, some specific things for communion. Communion, by the way, uh, the Lord's Supper, we call it in most churches, uh, is one of the ordinances of the church. Baptism, there's communion. Uh, these are two ordinances of the church, but and uh, we should we should observe these uh, as we do, uh, because Paul, uh, the, the God said, uh, uh, "Remember these as oft as you will." And uh, so uh, there's no specific uh, guidelines set up as far as when you do it, but. He said, as oft as you will, do this in remembrance of me. And so today, uh, we're going to uh, partake of the Lord's table. 
so I, I want to read uh, out of, I'll start out in Corinthians, and I'm going to back up and, and uh, bring you back up to Corinthians from the Old Testament to the New Testament. How many of you realize that there uh, was an Old Covenant and a New Covenant? Uh, so this is the new covenant that he started. So we're going to go back and look at the old covenant, and uh, we'll we'll try to catch you up to speed here. Uh, we got a long ways to go, and a short time to get there. So uh, y'all y'all uh, pray hard, and I'll preach fast. All right. First Corinthians chapter uh, number eleven. First Corinthians chapter eleven. I'm going to go ahead and read uh, several verses here. Not too many, about 10 verses, but uh, I believe we need to read this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. This is talking about the Lord's Supper. Uh, now, in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not that you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you. I'm so glad that that's not true here. That there are divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat, <coughs> eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating... Everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. What, have you not houses to eat and to drink in, or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which I also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks... He broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we should judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned uh, in, with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come together unto, the de uh, unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Lord, we thank you for this message. Lord, I thank you for the word. Uh, God, as we um, draw near to uh, the Lord's Supper today, uh, Lord, I pray that everyone in this room today uh, understands why we do what we do. Uh, God, we do it in remembrance of you, honoring you, God, and glorifying your name. We're not about us. It's about you, Lord. This is your table. And God, there are things on that table that should remind us of you and uh, what we have taken in. Uh, Lord, you live within us. And so the bread of life and uh, the blood live within our hearts and our spirit. And uh, God, that spirit that you put in us, Lord, that's you. And Lord, we recognize that today. As Vicki sang that song, I'm a child of the living God. And uh, Lord, uh, that's what we are. And, uh, we honor you and praise you today for what you've done in our life. We more than that, God, uh, we honor you and praise you uh, for not only for what you did in our life, but everybody's life in the world that would come to the foot of the cross and accept you into their life. Father, thank you for the cross of Calvary today. Your shed blood, your broken body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let, let me take you back uh, for sake of history. Uh, 
and kind of bring you back up to speed. And I'm going to walk you through uh, the Old Testament, if you will, uh, about uh, communion, about the Lord's table. Uh, God had a redemptive plan for man from the beginning of time. And in that redemptive plan, he saw the necessity for the blood sacrifice. You can find that in the book of Genesis. Uh, it's always been that way uh, ever since Cain killed Abel and since the sacrifice was made. But uh, even, even after that, we see it uh, played out in many of the lives of the characters that we read about in the Old Testament. And uh, we, we go on uh, to the uh, Exodus of the people from Egypt and, and God put on full display uh, to us uh, as a people about uh, this ordinance that he instituted, this, this covenant that he uh, came into with his people. Uh, and that was in Exodus chapter 12. And uh, what, that, what that entails is, uh, and you've heard the story, I've preached it many, many times, and, uh, about how uh, the death of the firstborn, the tenth plague, came upon Egypt. And uh, that night, before the death, uh, firstborn were killed, uh, uh, the Lord told his people, he said, uh, uh, now tonight, he said, we're, we're going to do something different. He said, I want you to take a lamb. I want you to take a lamb without bed. Now, everything he did in this ordinance was pointing to a thousand years ahead, and, and he was pointing to the cross of Calvary. He was pointing to the Lord's table. And, uh, he said, I want you to take a lamb, and uh, one without spot, without blemish, and I want you to take it in, and I want you to roast it on fire. And uh, he, he said, uh, I want you to eat it all, and, and, and consume it all. Put it inside you. Put the lamb inside. Well, that's a picture of salvation in itself. And, and he said, take the lamb and put it on. But he said, take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost and on the top, the mantle. He said, put it on the sides and on the top. What was he doing? He was drawing them a blood picture of the cross of Calvary. Uh, yeah, in, in, that, in that very instant, he, he showed them and revealed to them uh, that there was a cross that was coming, that a cross that they could look forward to. And, and that blood was what secured their life what was sustained them. He said, when I, I pass over tonight at midnight, he said, if I see the blood applied, uh, I'll pass over your house. You're, you're going to live. You're going to make it and you're going to get out of here. And so he's bringing uh, his people out of Egypt with this uh, uh, covenant that he's made with them. Uh, but there were some things uh, that he specifically set before them uh, that night. Uh, one was the meat. Uh, it, it was there, the sacrifice, that they roasted on the fire uh, and they took it within themselves. They, they put the lamb on the inside and that's what we as Christians do. Uh, but then he, he took the blood and applied it to their life. In other words, if you want to live, <laughs> you got to get under the blood. That, that's what he was saying. But there were some other things on that table. Uh, some of that was mixed with hyssop in, in that covenant. Uh, that hyssop uh, was uh, used in uh, purification or purging processes. And, and so what he was saying with the hyssop was, uh, I'm purging your sins. I, I'm forgiving you. I'm setting you free and with this new covenant. This was back in Exodus, y'all. Uh, he said, the hyssop represents the purging uh, of yourself. And then he, he said, uh, uh, there also, uh, there's going to be a dish of bitter herbs on that table. And the bitter herbs, uh, you say, well, why did he make them eat bitter herbs? Uh, that was to remind them of the many tears that were shed, 400 years of slavery in their life that they had been bound up by uh, uh, slavery, by Egyptian bondage. Uh, they couldn't be set free. They couldn't get free. They wanted to be free, but they couldn't. And God said, I've got good news for you. I've got a new covenant that I'm going to enter into you. I'm going to set you free and you can cry. You won't have to cry anymore. You've been, you can be brought out of the darkness into the light. I'm going to set you free once and for all. And that's the new covenant that he made with it. That covenant set them free that night. 
they went out into the wilderness and headed for the Red Sea, headed for the promised land, on a journey to the promised land. How many here this morning that you've truly been set free and you know that you're on the journey toward the promised land? Yeah. I don't know where y'all are going. That, that's where I'm headed. And, and so I, I've got that covenant down in my heart. I, I recognize that blood covenant that he made the, in the Old Testament. But then we, we see, we see a, a, a picture also of the Lord's table and the covenant in one of the most simple scriptures that you'll ever read. It's in Psalms 23. We, we see that and you say, well, how, how is uh, Psalms 23, what's that got to do with communion? You read it. <laughs> and first of all, it says the Lord is my shepherd. And if the shepherd's there, then the sheep's there. And so he says, you leadeth me beside still waters. You leadeth me in green pastures. But way on down there, verse 5 or 6, it says you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. What's he talking about? He's talking about the table that's he, the covenant that he said in Exodus chapter. David knew very well what he was talking about because David knew about the covenant. He knew that it was important to remember that covenant every year. He knew how important it was to bring the people together every year and remember and observe the Lord's Supper because the table that was set by God before them, they were to remember that every year. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't hurt us to remember the table every day of our life. If you've been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ, if the blood has been applied to the doorpost of your heart this morning, that's what it really means. And David, David wrote about that table. Lord, you, you, you're not only my shepherd, uh, you, you're, you're not only, you lead me in the paths of righteousness uh, for your name's sake. Not mine, David said, not mine, Lord, but, but for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? I will fear no evil. Why? Because I've got a God that's got a covenant with me that points me to the cross. And I know that he's going to deliver me from all evils. Uh, all the people around me. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. If you're a child of God in this room today, could you not stand to your feet and say, surely goodness and mercy have been following me all the days of my life. Why? Because the blood of Jesus Christ was caught on your doorpost and it saved your life. That covenant is still with us today. David knew all too well about the covenant of Christ. And Jesus showed us throughout the Old Testament, 400 years, they were in slavery and bondage and they could not recognize their God publicly. Could you imagine? Could you imagine the United States today? If we were in bondage and we could not recognize Jesus publicly? We couldn't partake of the covenant that he made for you and I if we had to be silenced for the rest of our 400 years and could not call the name of Jesus? I can't imagine that. But then the 400 years was over. The people were set free. And now they're under a new blood covenant with God. Oh, you, you would think that after that night, after God brought them out of Egypt, after God brought them out of the darkness of their life for 400 years and finally set them free, he heard their cries of affliction. You would think that those people would never, ever cross God again. They would never, ever go against God again, that they would stay true to God for what God did for them in their life by setting them free. So these people, 
failed again. Mm -hmm. They still turned their back on God. I cannot imagine that. But yet, I see it everywhere I go. When I tell people that God sent His Son to die for them, they look at me and say, really? I never heard of that. Why would anybody die for me? I'm a good person. I don't need nobody to die for me. Oh, you may be a good person. You may be faithful to a church. You may sing in the choir. You may do all of these things for Jesus. But if he's not your shepherd, if you don't know him personally, you see, this communion is talking about a relationship, fellowship with Christ. What you'll find is at the end of your trail that Jesus said, depart from me. I never had any fellowship with you. I didn't know you. All you wanted to do was work in iniquity and sin. And therefore, depart from me. That's what some are going to hear. And so, he instituted the Passover in Exodus. In Psalms 23, David wrote about the table, the Lord's table, and what was on it and, and what that entailed. He, 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 he didn't write it, but Exodus did. And, and so he knew how important this was. But then, fast forward with me to the last book of the Old Testament. In the book of Malachi. And see what happened. Malachi said, you people. The Lord said it. Malachi didn't. He said, concerning the Lord's table. He said two things about those people. He said, you have profaned it. And you have polluted it. Why did he say that? Because those people, now remember I told you, in Exodus, God was very specific about the kind of sacrifice he wanted. He wanted a lamb without blemish. He wanted a perfect sacrifice. Because he knew that that perfect sacrifice was pointing directly to Jesus. But in Malachi, it said they were bringing animals that were blind and lame and hard, sickly animals, and say, well, I'm going to get rid of this anyway, so I'll just take it as an offering to God. And God said, I'm sick of your offerings. I'm sick of your attitude. They thought they had come so far from being delivered. Now they're despising the covenant. Now they're saying, uh, really, church, do we have to do this again? Do we have to come and participate and take communion again? We do that all the time. And it's, it's, it's become old to us. Uh, it doesn't have the meaning to us, what, what we, the generation maybe before us. Maybe they like doing that. But do we have to do that again this time? That's what Malachi, the people of Malachi's time, was saying. We're tired of your covenant, is what they were saying in Wingo language. We're tired of you, God, telling us what to do. Yeah, you may be sitting here and you may say the same thing. Oh, pastor, we've been doing this for years. We've been uh, recognizing communion. We've been taking it. We've been partaking that. And, and, and it's getting old to me. Let's just do away with it. And, and we won't have to worry about that anymore. Let me tell you something. If God set it up, and he told us to remember it as often as we will. I'm telling you, in our hearts, we ought to be taken. I don't know about y'all, uh, but, but what I take, I know taking communion is supposed to be a solemn, uh, uh, a dignified uh, uh, ordeal. It's supposed to be a, a, a solemn uh, service, but I can't help this morning. But when I, when I think about communion and I think about the blood that's been applied to my life, I think about the bread of life. That was broken for me. I can't help but get happy and shout for joy because I'm able to take communion today. I'm able to participate in the Lord's table today. We ought to be joyful when we take communion because that's the covenant that delivered your son. Yeah, that's what it is. And some people don't realize that. They say, well, that, that ain't important. I'm just going to skip that. You go ahead and skip it. 
But don't be surprised if God skips you. There you go. <laughs> so in Malachi, we find that the people are murmuring and complaining. And the Lord tells them, He said, Lord, boys, y'all profane my name. He said, well, they said, well, how do we profane your name? He said, uh, you just take my bread for granted. You don't, you don't really understand what that bread means. You're just, you're just coming to eat and drink. And, and Paul remembered that. That's why he wrote what he did in Corinthians. He said, uh, you, you're just looking at this as another ordinary thing that we do in church. No, folks, this is extraordinary. Because this is all about the bread, his body, and his blood. That's what it's about. But the people in Malachi, he said, you have polluted my name. But he said, you know what? Because you have polluted my name, I'm going to cause my name to be great among the heathen. That's what he said, Malachi. You read it. He said, if you won't lift up my name, I'm going to go out into the highways and the hedges, and I'm going to make my name be lifted up among the... If my people won't call on my name, I'll give some... He said in Matthew, he said, if you won't praise me, I'll get the rocks to praise me. If the so, why not? Listen, if we can't praise him today, if you can't give thanks to God today, if you can't praise him and give him a hand clap of praise, what in the world do you think you're going to do when you get to heaven? Because I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be praising the one that gave me life. Listen. Malachi. Remember, 400 years of slavery. They're set free. And then by the time another 400 year rolls around, they forgot Exodus. They forgot David. They forgot the Lord's table. It's just become old and mundane to them. You know what God did? He said, okay, I'm going to give you another 400 years of silence. I ain't even going to talk to you for 400 years. And he did. From Malachi to Matthew, 400 more years. I, I, can, I can just picture God up there sitting on his throne. Okay, y'all had 400 years of slavery. You had 400 years that you decided you could do without me. And I shut up for 400 years and at the end of that, right before the end of that, are y'all getting me now? Y'all want to talk now? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me now? After 400 years of silence. But then, my God spoke in such a way that we have never seen anything like it. He brought his only son down into this world, out of the glorious realms of heaven, and brought him down and made him like man so that he might suffer the likeness of sin in us. Uh, but he never sinned, but he saw the sin in our lives, and he lived a sinless life before all the people of the earth. And, uh, and then he, at the end of his life, watch this. He said, boys, I'm going to be taking out of here pretty soon. He said, so tonight, let's eat the last Passover together. So they went into the upper room to commemorate, to remember the ordinance of the Passover. Now this time, remember in Exodus, it was the meat, it was the bread, and it was the blood. And it was the hyssop. Yeah. But now, he gets up to the upper room and the disciples are looking. See, they know the Old Testament. And they're looking at that table. Man, I'm about ready to shout. They said, we see the bread, preacher. We see the cup of the blood. And we see the bitter herbs. <laughs> But where is the meat? And Jesus just kind of folds his arm and leans back on the table. He said, I'm your sacrifice. 
I'm your sacrifice. You don't need to be looking for another sacrifice. I have come. I am your sacrifice. And I'm going to do it once and for all so that it'll cover your sins. That's what communion is all about. It's about the blood of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made on Calvary's cross so that you and I would know that we have a new covenant with God. It's a blood covenant. He said, Preacher, I don't like to talk about that blood. <laughs> you may not like to talk about it now. But when you get to heaven, you're going to see how important it was. Because his blood was shed just for you. In that upper room, Jesus sat down. And before he sat down, <laughs> before he sat down, he named you and me. What do you mean, preacher? He didn't name me. He didn't call my name. Oh, yeah, he did. He said, one of you is going to betray me. You see, I can insert my name in that category. You could insert your name in that category. Because every one of us here today at some point in our life has betrayed Jesus. Mr. Preacher, I don't like that. You're pointing a finger at me and, and saying I'm guilty. <laughs> yes, you're exactly right. And you are guilty. And so am I. He walked into that room and he said, one of you is going to betray me. But then they had the meal. And he said, the one that I, I, I don't know if this was a bitter or but it, it was a substance that they mixed up. But he said, the one that dips the sock with me is the one that's going to betray me. It was the one closest to Jesus that night. The very one that betrayed him. You say, how could that be, preacher? How could, how could a man that's sitting that close to the Son of God, how could he betray him? Because his heart wasn't right. It's the same principle today. You may think you're that close to Jesus, but is your heart really that close to him. And that's why Jesus said, as oft as you will, do this in remembrance of me. Do what? What's he talking about? He said, when you break that bread, look at the cross. That's my body that was beaten and bruised and bled for you. And then he said, take the cup now, that cup, he said, this represents the blood, the New Testament covenant. But what was the cup to Jesus? I'll tell you what it was. You remember just after this that he went out to the Garden of Gethsemane that early that morning and he began to pray. He got off over there by himself to God himself and he got down on his knees and it said he prayed so intensely that there were sweat drops of blood coming off him. What did he say? He said, oh God, if there's any other way than to drink from this cup, let me do that. But if not, I'll drink from that cup. Why did he say that? Because in that cup for Jesus, lay your sin and my sin Every sorrow, every heartache, everything that we feel in this life was in that cup. He said, I'm willing to take it, God, and I'll take it and put it on the cross of Calvary for them if it will save their life. I don't know about you, but it saved mine. He drank the cup that I deserved of death. He put it on himself. And when God looked down, he had to turn his back on his only son. Why? Because my sin and your sin hung on the cross with him. And he couldn't bear to look at sin. Listen to me. He said, as often as you will, do this in remembrance of me. Today, we're doing this in remembrance of the covenant that God made with us 
the bread and the blood. This is his body. This is his table. Never ever should we pollute it or profane it and call it common. Because there's nothing common about my Jesus. He bled and he died to save you and me. But then he went on to say, he said, if you come in and you eat and drink unworthily, you're not hurting me, he said, but you're drinking and eating yourself to damnation because you really don't believe there is a covenant in your life. You don't really believe that that blood's been applied to your life. He said, don't do this. He said, make a way. Get yourself to a place where you can examine yourself. Examine your heart. You see, the world, the world looks at us on the outside, but he sees on the inside. He said, examine your heart before you do this. And clean your heart up. Ask God to clean yourself. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Any kind of thoughts you have, malice towards somebody else, any kind of bitter feelings you have, you need to come before you take this and make yourself right with God. That's what he said. I didn't say it he did. So what we're going to do this morning before we take communion, I'm going to have Miss Brenda come and just play soft. Now, now, you come into the altar doesn't mean that you've been a bad person. It doesn't mean that you've got great sin in your life. Coming to the altar this morning to get yourself cleansed of God is simply acknowledging that God is your Savior. Jesus is part of your life. By partaking in communion, you're saying, I want to be a part of that. I got Jesus in me, the bread is in me, the blood is in me, and I'm a partaker of the covenant of Christ. So if you've got something in your mind, in your heart, that you can't get, you, just, you can't shake it, and you want God to set it right in your heart, now is your time. Right now, right here, this morning. Would you stand with me this morning? And you don't, you don't have to come to the altar. But it'd be good if you did. If you got all against anybody in your life, he said, come and let me cleanse you. Let me set you free. You see, this is the equivalent of breaking the yoke of bondage for 400 years. This is what you're doing right now. Say, Lord, I've been set free. I'm not in bondage anymore. I'm serving the true and the living God. But God, there's a little something I've got in my heart that me and you must take care of, Lord. I know it's not anything to anybody else, but Lord, you know what it is. And Lord, I need cleanse of that. And what these people are doing right now, they're asking God to cleanse their heart before they partake in the table of the Lord. I'm so glad we have the opportunity this morning. Partake in the Lord's table. It may not be important to you, but it's one of the greatest, the greatest covenants that the Lord ever made to be in you. To show the world that we belong. For Jesus. Oh, if you've been set free, you ought to be thankful today for the bread and the blood, his body and his blood. It was broken. Oh, it was more than broken. It was beaten. It was battered. It was bruised and bleeding. Because of your selfish sins and my selfish sins. He loved you enough not to leave you where you were in bondage of sin, but he made a new covenant with you that you might come to the table of the Lord and partake 
in His salvation. Freeing of your soul. I'm so glad today that we can remember the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. All hearts clear. You can come from both directions. You can come around this way. You can come around this way and partake in this. The Lord said when he lifted it up to his disciples that day, he said, this is my body, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And that's why we take the broken bread. The unleavened bread, by the way, is what it's supposed to be. Why is it unleavened? Because there's no rising up. There's nobody greater than our God. So you come this morning as we pretend in the Lord's table. Let's pray. Father, we, heaven, we thank you for your power and your presence. And Lord, uh, this table, Lord, we don't see any meat here. We don't see the sacrifice. Oh, God, but your power, your presence is here this morning. Our sacrifice has come down to us. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, bless this communion today. May we always honor it with reverence to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You come. Once you've received your communion, the bread and the blood, would you go back to your seat and we'll take this together. Just hold on to it. We're going we're gonna to all do it together. I believe that's important. It shows unity. As the Apostle Paul said, we're not coming to eat. You have houses to eat in. You have houses to drink in. What we're doing here is remembering his ordinance, remembering the Lord's table in his presence.
after they had received the cup and after they had received the bread. One of the other ordinances of the church that is very little practice and very little known. It said Jesus took off his towel and he washed his disciples' feet. If you've never been to a foot washing, I urge you to go. We've had several here. It's one of the most solemn services I've ever been in. Most humbling service I've ever been in. said when he picked up the bread, he raised it toward heaven. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Remember it always. And he did that. And then, when they had eaten the bread, he took the cup. And he said, this is the covenant of my New Testament to you. He said, off as you will, this is my blood, which was shed for you. Drink it in remembrance of me. If y'all would go to the back with these and collect those as you know. Collect them up, collect these. Get these. You can just go to the door, they'll come out. The Bible says, after they had received the Lord's Supper that night, said so they sang a new song and they went out. Have we got a new song for my piano player? Can you Can y'all play something up there softly and tenderly something? Or Jesus paid it all. While they're, while they're finding that song, let me pray. Father, once again, we're so thankful that we're able to partake of your table. Lord, we recognize and we acknowledge that you are our perfect sacrifice. Your presence is here today in the lives of your people. Lord, help us to reverence this day every day that we will do this and remember you. Lord, thank you, thank you for the blood that was applied to the doorpost of our heart for the sanctification that you've given us, that we can be called your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You got the song? song, it don't matter. I think he's got it. Y'all got it? That's all right. We got it. We got it. All right. As Brenda begins to play softly, you can go this morning. You're dismissed. May God bless you today.